All right, so tonight I want to take a look at a little bit of some current events. God willing, in the future, I would like to take a look at a number of things with reference to current events because there's a lot of things going on that we need to pay attention to. And really and truly, by every indication, a lot of the prophecies that the Bible would have laid out are being fulfilled. And all of the major players and all of the little component parts are seemingly coming together. And we are definitely, it's very hard <laughs> to think that we are not in the very last days of the last days. I'm sure that many Christians have gone through this before, especially with events like World War I, World War II, where you had extreme war and extreme violence, worldwide war, and we had the atomic bomb, you know, being dropped in Japan a couple times. We had that crazy guy Hitler doing the most. And one of the things that happened in World War II was obviously an attack on the Jewish people, which is obviously, again, something that's linked to Bible prophecies and so on. You can say what you like, but the world is a spiritual place. It's operating on God's timeline and is God's place. And we would do well to interpret the happenings on earth according to God's timeline and according to God's commentary. But we seldom do that. We just kind of ignore the Bible, ignore God's commentary. We think that it's a fairy tale. We think that it's something to discard. We pay attention to CNN. We pay attention to Al Jazeera and Fox News and so on. Even though we all know, if you hadn't known from before, you should definitely know after COVID that all of the news outlets, at least in America, are very much part of the problem, right? I don't have all sorts of secular facts and so on, but the impression I get from those commentaries that I look at online is that a lot of the major corporations in the world, they have big stakes in the media companies and the media companies are basically at their bidding. So they can control the things that are happening in the world and then they control the media and the commentary that everybody is looking at regarding those things that are happening in the world. And that's a very powerful combination. And with that combination, they're able to control people and do a whole lot of stuff. So say what you like. It's very, very clear that this world is a spiritual place and that the things recorded in the Bible pointing to the end days, the last days, are very accurate. And everything seems to be falling into line like clockwork. And... As I was saying, right, I was saying that a lot of people in the past might have thought, oh, this Hitler has got to be the one, <laughs> right? Hitler has got to be the person who's going to introduce, who's the, the Antichrist, the person that's supposed to come and, you know, do certain things. You're not getting into all of that right now. But there are so many times in the world that things were so bad that you can kind of see why Christians would have said, certainly it is now, now is the time. But I can't see how now is not the time, especially with all the technology that we have knocking around and how COVID went. COVID was a really clear example of what the powers that be are aiming at, right? They're aiming at controlling and manipulating the population and doing as they like. And nothing screams and is like that type of behavior. Anyway, so I want to take a look at some of the things that happened in the last days. I don't know if we can get to jump into it in a more full way next week. It really has to do with timing and scheduling and all that. But I did want to start a little bit tonight, just touching on some broad things. And one of the things I wanted to touch on was this whole idea of the gender wars, the gender reassignment surgery is almost like a 
pandemic in itself, uh, epidemic really, where I don't know if you're aware, it's not happening here in Barbados or I don't think it's happening anywhere else except for America and England and maybe a few other places at the scale that it is happening in those places. But if you didn't know, there's a incredible thing that's happening in America right now where people, it's almost as if the people have lost their minds, right? You know, back in the day, it started out with people fighting for gay rights. And we all know that the scriptures have explicitly identified homosexuality as displeasing to God, right? And not lightly so, but heavily so, in a very, very serious way. It's referred to as an abomination. But, you know, we saw that pushing forward and pushing forward. And then eventually, when Mr. Barack Obama came to power, I guess it was so exciting for people, especially black people, you know, that it was the first black president in America. So it was somewhat of a big thing for white people and for black people, for everyone and the whole world. The whole world was looking at that. That wasn't something that you might have expected. Nevertheless, it happened. And he was a fairly interesting character. But according to a lot of the commentators, he wasn't really up to much good. <laughs> and one of the things that he would have ushered in was this whole idea of same-sex marriage and that kind of thing. So that happened under his watch. And then things have been becoming more and more dark and things are deteriorating at incredibly rapid rate. Right now in America, there's division like never before. Now, as Christians, we know what it is. It's the spirit of Antichrist, right? Anything that is opposing Christ, opposing God's laws, opposing the standards that God has put in place, anything like that is basically coming from the Antichrist spirit. I mean, the name itself is self-explanatory, right? It is anti-God. It is anti-Christ. It is against God. So you're going to find things, and you see it progressively happening. The country getting worse and worse and worse, and you see that spirit fighting, especially in the legal arena, fighting to get laws passed, right? Fighting to make certain things legal and illegal. And the devil has always worked like that, right? The devil was always a legalist. He was always a, a letter of the law person, and he up to this day, leverages the laws of God against the people of God. A very, very quick example of that would be when Balaam was unable to curse the children of Israel. He tried to curse them, but he couldn't get it done. And he knew that he wouldn't be able to get it done. <laughs> and he told the king that he was working for, like, I can't get them cursed because God is not going to allow me to curse them, <laughs> right? But the guy still wanted him to try to curse them, and Balaam couldn't get it done. But, now, there's no explicit scripture verse that outlines this, but it kind of follows on. What happens next when they fail at cursing the children of Israel, what Balaam did, or I don't want to say that because the Bible doesn't explicitly say that, but the next, cap the next couple of chapters we see is that the, the evil regime slash king that wanted to destroy Israel, they sent out their women naked and enticing the soldiers to lay down with them and so on. And the soldiers went and laid down with them. And that got God's wrath going, right? So Balaam couldn't curse the children of Israel, but he could try to entice them such that they can put themselves outside of God's protection and in fact attract God's wrath. Okay, and the trick basically is trying to leverage the laws of God against the children of God. So they couldn't get to the children of God one way, so they tried to do it another way. But it's all based on the law because what the devil needed them to do is to break the laws of God so that they will be vulnerable to an attack from God, or at least the lack of protection from God. So the devil has always been a legalist, always fighting with the laws. And we see several examples of that. Maybe we can look at that another time. But that's one of the things that you can 
bet your bottom dollar that the devil is going to do. Try to use the law against you. And you see it happening. So first of all, they pass the gay marriage rights and so on. And then you started to see a lot of this transgender stuff happening. So, you know, you had the LGBT and then the ad Q and then the add some other letters and the list progressively got longer and longer. And now it has a plus on the end, suggesting that, oh, there's more to come, <laughs> you know, or, you know, we can't fit all. We can't conveniently fit everything in one ridiculous string of letters. So we just put a plus to indicate that any sort of abomination or any sort of alteration to what the standard and norm is, we just append it and we tuck it under that plus, right? LGBTQAI will have a plus. So it, got, it kept getting worse. And then, of course, we've got the abortion situation where they're doing their best to try to make abortion as easy as possible. And so all this is part of the feminist movement, the radical feminist movement. They've been pushing to basically destroy families, destroy men, feminize men, make it a negative idea to be a man. All these kind of things are happening in American culture right now. And it's crazy. I mean, we, I really got to sit down and kind of outline it and we can talk about it at length perhaps at another time. But one of the things that, but one of the things that's happening right now is this transgender thing. This is on the rampage, right? So what's happening now is that these people are pushing for young kids. I'm talking about three, four, five, six, seven. They're, first of all, they're trying to incorporate gender studies and so on in the classrooms and they're introducing little children to all sorts of sexual sexual topics like gayness and like drag queens and different types of families where you got two husbands or two wives or you have multiple people and they're actually putting it in the school curriculum these types of topics gender studies and, and this kind of thing and they're confusing the little children. Now, at the age of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you don't know who you are, what you are. You're just now learning the world. As far as you're concerned, you could be Superman, or you could be Spider-Man, or you can be, you know, Space Invader Man, you know, all sorts of things you could be. You don't have a strong grasp of reality, but they keep introducing these ideas to children saying, hey, if you feel like a girl today, Tommy, you could be a girl if you wanted to be a girl. Or, hey, Susie, if you feel like a boy, you know, you, you might be a boy trapped in a girl's body. And so we can help you to transition from being a girl to a boy. And what's happening is that the people have made it, again, I don't have all the details before me, but it seems like they've made it illegal to prevent as in it makes it illegal for the parents themselves of these little children to intervene and prevent their child from getting this gender transformation in other words once a child says hey i think i'm a girl trapped in a boy's body and i want to be a boy and the parent takes the kid to a doctor the doctor has to practice what they call something like gender affirming care basically saying that if the boy child says that he's a girl, the doctor has to agree. The doctor can't try to convince the child, okay, just wait a bit, make sure that you know what you're doing. The doctor can't try to persuade the kid in any way against taking that route, nor can the parents. Once the child says, the child, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, once the child says, that they want to transition, everybody has to basically align themselves with the child's will. That's what they're doing. And I think they're making it illegal to go against it. So every time you, you scroll through Instagram or look at some videos on YouTube, you're seeing, you're seeing parents in their some sort of school teachers meeting, talking to the, the leaders of the school and saying, hey, 
you know, you should stop teaching our children that. You have no right teaching our children that. Left that out. You know, try and teach my children some maths and some English. We ain't putting them in here for that. Let us teach our children about sexuality and about religion and that kind of thing. That's not for you to do. But these people are going headlong, especially this administration here. They're pushing this thing. The conservative side of the American political, you know, spectrum, they're pushing back against this kind of thing. A lot, now again, a lot of the conservatives in America are Christian or Christian-based people. And they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But they tend to hold to more biblical views. So they're, they tend to be people like that choose pro-life as opposed to pro-choice. Meaning, in the case of abortion, even if the young girl was to get an inconvenient pregnancy, let the young girl bear the child. Even if she gives him up for adopt, him or her up for adoption, just don't kill the baby. Right? That's pro-life. And then the pro-choicers are those that are saying, look, it's my body. This is the girl's that is. It's my body, and you can't tell me what to do, right? If it's my body, I have full control as to if a child is able to be born in me or not. Guys, the, the confusion and the corruption over there is so ridiculous. The list is so long, <laughs> right? That, you know, I, I, simply, I simply can't cover everything right now. But it is absolutely crazy. It is bonkers over there at the moment. And the thing that's so amazing to me is how big college professors and big hardback lawyers and senators and news reporters and so on could actually start to believe that a man can bear children and that a man can just identify as a woman and then and then be given access to female bathrooms and female sports on a national level so you got guys men that transition into being a female and then they get to participate in female sports and then this trash this the female athletes right absolutely trash them knock them out the park because obviously they're bigger, they're stronger, they got more, more of a physical advantage because in actual fact, they're men, but they're identifying as women. You have a situation where some of these guys, when they find that they got sentenced in prison, they quickly identify as a woman so that they can go into a female prison. And now you got situations where some of the female prisoners are being raped by the transgender women, right? absolute craziness going on but the thing that's so surprising is that these adults are actually believing i mean some of these people is fight hard fully convicted that what they're saying makes sense they don't want to call a woman a woman anymore they want to call them birthing people chest feeders bleeders all sorts of different things because they want to they want to avoid the official proper standard definition of what a woman is i'm not exactly sure why they want to do that but i think that basically the reason why they try to skirt the issue is because once you lay down the standard at the root it necessarily propagates into more and more truth right once you have the truth at the root it, the next conclusion is going to be a truthful conclusion and the next conclusion is going to be a truthful conclusion. So what they're trying to do is erase the base so that there's no real foundation so that they can just continue to contort the truth and make all sorts of abominations in their mind. So they're trying to avoid the fundamentals. They're trying to erase the foundation, right? They're trying to erase the truth. That's what they're trying to do. And no wonder, because it's the spirit of Antichrist. So a lot of people in America, I mean, and I don't blame them, <laughs> because when you see these adults, right, I'm talking about people in suit and tie, people in big corporations, people in big government positions. I mean, these people are actually thinking to themselves. They, they cannot tell you what a woman is. They refuse to say that a woman is an a adult female of the human species they refuse to admit to that they keep saying things like a woman is any person who identifies as a woman okay so what is it that they're identifying as a woman what is a woman 
a person who identifies as a woman. Okay, you you still need to I you still need to define what the word woman is. You can't say that a woman is a person that identifies as a woman. So what's the woman? I mean, big heart about people, 30, 40, 50. <laughs> I mean, I cannot believe it. And these people are actually believing this thing. And the the people that have any sort of no not, not only Christians. Anybody with any sort of common sense is looking at this stuff and is saying, this is bizarre. This is ridiculous. Like, what on earth is happening? Now, it's, I mean, it's just amazing to see it. But those people out there, in addition to seeing it and being confused about it, they don't know exactly what's happening. Now, thankfully, the scripture tells us exactly what's happening. And... It's just the spirit of Antichrist. So let's jump into the scriptures now quickly and let's take a look at a few verses and let's see how it is that this is nothing new and this is no surprise because all of this was predicted. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So we got to underline those words right there. Who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. Okay? What may be known of God is manifest to them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools." and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever." For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Okay, so we got a lot to unpack here, but it's really basic. Basically what this passage is saying is that whenever God shows you the truth and you reject the truth, he aids you in your pursuit of the lie. I guess it's like somebody keeps saying, I want this, I want this. And as a parent, you're saying, no, you don't want that. Trust me, you don't want that. That's not what you want. But you keep saying, I want this, I want this, I want this. So then, eventually, the parent says, well, I want you to be free. I want you to choose what you want to choose, so I'm going to let you choose it. Right? It's a principle. The Bible says, knock, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you will find. Right? Ask, and it will be given. So, even 
for the negative, God will still help. Not help, but you understand, he will allow. Because you, of your own volition, consciously keep choosing the wrong thing. Let's read some of these verses again. Back to verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So that's the first verse that we want to be mindful of here. Who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. God is against those who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Okay, because what may be known of God is manifest to them. What does that mean? That means that God has shown them already what needs to be known, right? It's manifest to them already, for God has shown it to them. It's not like they don't know. God already showed them. We in the West have discovered the truth in many instances. We discovered science. We discovered the reliability of the laws of the physical world. We discovered biology. We discovered chemistry and all of these reliable scientific truths we've discovered by building our calculations on the truth, what was empirically proven. Look, we can tell that A, B, C, we can see this thing happening. We can see this thing happening. So we know biology. Everybody knows biology. Everybody knows that there are two genders, male and female. The entire human race is divided into male and female for the last, God knows how many thousands of years we have been on the planet. Nobody, right, can dispute that there's a binary situation. You got a male and its realities and a female and its realities. A man is simply incapable of producing a child. He doesn't have the equipment. A woman is incapable of being a man. She is without the equipment. They're two different things. And there's nothing in between. We know this. Everybody knows this. But verse 18, they suppress the truth in a righteousness. And even though they know it because God has shown it to us, they're rejecting it. Let's move on. Verse 21. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So we got a, a, a double stage thing here happening. They knew God. They did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So that's on the overarching principle. Let's bring it down to smaller components. They know the biology, but they're not happy that they know the biology and the truth, and they're not thankful, but rather they allow their minds to come into futile thoughts, and so their foolish hearts were darkened. Verse 22, professing to be wise, they became fools. Now, I would have you know that most of these ridiculous propositions that are coming out of the liberalism in America are coming from the universities, right? And of course, we know that ultimately it's the spirit of Antichrist. It's a spirit of anti-God doctrine, right? So we know that it's really ultimately satanic. But the point is, He's coming through the wisdom of the society, the actual professors and the doctors and the lecturers in the universities. They are the ones propagating these ideologies. Anyhow, professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Now, Paul is speaking about idol worship and so on of the past, right? But our idol worship is the same thing, it's just that it, it has a more sophisticated form. We don't really, well, I mean, we apparently we still do bow down to four-footed beasts and animals and so on because everywhere you look in America, they're putting some sort of beast-like image on the courtrooms and in different places in the country, putting up these idols. And these symbolic representations that we could only, as spiritually awake people, recognize as demonic figures. Oftentimes, you would hear that in Hollywood, they got these high-level people who are doing certain sacrifices, 
doing certain rituals and that kind of stuff in Hollywood, right? So, and these are not only the actors, it's also like these big up people, people in high places doing all this ritual stuff. So this stuff is still going on, mind you, as sophisticated as they would have us to believe that they are. Anyhow, going on to verse 24, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the light and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. That's a key verse right there. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie. Verse 25. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. So again, it's not that it didn't have the truth. They had the truth, but they exchanged it for a lie. Because the only way that you could believe that there are more than two genders is if you want to believe that. Because there's no, there's no, there's absolutely no evidence or anything supporting that in reality. The only way that you could believe that is if you want to believe that. Anyhow, moving on. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. So we need to take note of verse 24 and verse 26. Verse 24 says, therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. And then in verse 26, it says, For this reason God gave them up to vile passions. And all that means is that God allowed them. You know, he didn't restrain them any further. Because what God does is he tries to restrain us from destroying ourselves and committing acts that would violate us and destroy our lives. He tries his best to restrain us and to contain us so that we don't go overboard and plummet to our own doom. But when we keep persisting in a lie, the Bible says that God gives them up, meaning that he allows them to pursue the ways that they prefer, right? For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use for the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they do not like to retain God in their knowledge, again, God gave them over to a debased mind. So that's another phrase suggesting the same thing. God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. So they keep saying, I want to do this, I want to do this. And God says, all right, you go ahead. Okay. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, etc., etc., etc. So I want us to take note of those three verses. I mean, all of these verses, but those three in particular, 24, 26, and 28. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. So in each instance, we have words that are suggesting that God is removing the restraint that he would have been trying to put on them, and he's letting them run wild and do what they want to do. Now, let me say something here. So even as Christians, some people, we have battles with the flesh, you know, because that's what the flesh does. The flesh is unrighteous. It wants to do sexual immorality. It wants to participate in wickedness and covetousness and maliciousness and all of that, because all of this is resident in the unsaved man as well as the Christian man. The Christian man still has resident in him the sinful, corrupt nature, right? So you will find some Christians that exhibit backbiter behavior, haters of God. Well, not quite haters of God, but you will find Christians that could be violent, that could be proud and so on. But the difference here is that there's still a restraint in the Christian. The Holy Ghost is still in the Christian fighting against these sins overrunning the life of the Christian, right? And we're not supposed to be participating in this wickedness in any way, shape or form. 
Nevertheless, I would be a fool to suggest to you that when you go to church, you're going to find perfect people. That's the last thing you can find. You're going to find people who are struggling with their sins, just not just like, but they're not exempt from the struggle of flesh, right? So the man in the world, he has the flesh struggle to, to fight. The Christian man also has the flesh to fight. The only thing is that the Christian has the benefit of the Lord being on his side and you know, he is trying to conquer his sin and the Lord is also trying to help him to conquer his sin. And so there is a restraining activity that goes on because God is helping, right? But the, the point I'm trying to make here is that when we suppress the truth, verse 18, right? When we suppress the truth, and verse 25, we exchange the truth of God for the lie, Okay, what God does, God gives us over to that lie. He gives us up to that lie. Let's jump over quickly to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And let's read. Now, this is straight talking about Antichrist and the advent of the Antichrist. And this is very much in keeping with what's happening today. So this is Paul speaking to the Thessalonians, and he says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So you see some key verses there again. What do we have? We have a situation where people refuse the truth, so God gave them over to a lie. Okay, so we, we got to look at a couple of these scriptures. Okay, verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the fallen away comes first. What's the fallen away? The fallen away is the, the removal, as it were, of the barrier. Let's just put it that way. And we'll see that again. So let's, let's continue. Okay, so verse 6. And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. Right? It's the Holy Spirit that's restraining, restraining the world from going down into the pit with this lawless person. Right? Because this, this entire passage here is about the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness. Right? Again, that's how you can know that what's happening in America and across the world is an antichrist spirit because it is attacking the laws and trying to remove them, basically. They're trying to make the laws so vague and so void of substance and foundation that there's basically no law. So, you know, a man could do anything, a woman could do anything, and soon from now, and they've already started, they're trying to normalize pedophilia and adults having sexual relations with children. That's what they're trying to do. That's one of the things that they're trying to do, which is basically pure lawlessness. And that's what the lawless one does, or the Antichrist does, right? Verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed. So let me just read verse 6 and go on again. And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. 
For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains, which is the Spirit of God, will do so until he is taken out of the way. So right now, the Spirit of God is holding the world back from precipitously dropping into its own mess, right? The Holy Spirit is restraining, restraining. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So there's a lawless one that's coming. That's the Antichrist. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Again, how does this person work? With power, signs, and lying wonders. Right? And once you see lying and deception, you know Satan about there. Verse 10. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved so you see they had the opportunity to accept the truth now this is speaking broadly this is speaking about receiving christ as savior and adopting the ways of christ and submitting to his authority in general right what we are talking about is more specific but it all falls under the same thing essentially and with all unrighteousness deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. So instead of telling the children, listen, you're not a boy in a girl's body. You are a girl in a girl's body who happens to be feeling funny, right? You feel it, you got funny feelings, but that's nothing new. All humans get funny feelings in one direction or the other. We all have inordinate desires because of our fleshly nature our flesh nature is in itself corrupt and if you knew the truth it would make more sense so some people have a proclivity to take things that are not theirs some people have the evil desires to cheat on their wife and be adulterous and be promiscuous with different women and there's some women that lean towards being promiscuous with multiple men all of these are things that are not right and then we have some people that have some sort of leaning towards the same sex all of that is not right and then you may have a situation where you have some weird thoughts suggesting that you should be of a different sex all of that is not right so it's not like if these people alone are suffering with inordinate affections we all suffer with inordinate affections because we're all humans and the corrupt flesh that we have is not interested in holiness or righteousness the corrupt flesh that we have is just interested in gratification and it's messed up right that's why we all have to fight within ourselves to bear our cross and to to bear our cross and to you know basically do the best that we can with god's help to walk in god's ways so they had the opportunity to believe the truth and to adopt the truth and to receive the truth, but they didn't do that. What they did is they, verse 10, they did not receive the, the love of the truth that they might be saved. And then we go into verse 11, which is the verse that is key here. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. right? So God himself assists them in their own delusion so that they can believe their own lie. Verse 12, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But again, the strong idea here is that once we refuse the truth, we are very, very susceptible and vulnerable to a lie. And, and God says, strong delusion, verse 11. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, right? So that's what's happening in today's society right now. Because you might be looking on as a, as a sensible human being and you may be thinking to yourself, what on earth is going on here? How is it that these big hard bat people could actually be having a serious debate in a big official courtroom and they're still trying to figure out what a woman is and they're making these preposterous arguments against everything that makes sense and you're saying to yourself what on earth is going on that's what's going on right here it's the last days and the antichrist is about to show up 
And essentially, God is allowing the people to have what they want. They, they refuse to receive the truth. They refuse to submit to God. They refuse to acknowledge his law as his law. God said clearly in his word, male and female made he them. He didn't make anything else. Male and female made he them. That's what God says in his word. And then he goes on and he says, a man should do such and such, and he should not wear a woman's garment. A woman shall do such and such, right? And he clearly defines what men are supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. And then he clearly defines what women are supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do, right? He makes these things very clear. And he says, okay, this is how sex is supposed to be conducted. And these are, this is what's permissible and what's not permissible. But what we do, right? Let's jump to this scripture quickly here. And this is a popular verse here. There's another prophetic verse, but this is very much speaking about what's happening in this day and age. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. That's what's happening in the world. Well, that's what has been happening, but that's what is ultimately happening right now. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their yokes from us. Right? They're saying, we don't like the idea that there's only male and female. That's a fetter and a bond, a chain that restricts us from pursuing the abominations of our imagination. So we're going to change that rule. We're going to change that law. We're going to exchange the truth for a lie. We don't like the idea that a person has to be bound to the original gender that they were born into this world with. We don't like that. We want to supersede the biology and the reality of God. And we want to play God. And we want to poke around with our knives and our scaffolds and our products and our chemicals. And we want to try to pretend that we can make a man into a woman. And we can conduct surgery and do all sorts of manipulations to the body because we we think that we have outgrown the basic fundamental truths that god has created the world with we think that they're bonds and we want to cast we want to break their bonds and we want to cast it away from us right we want to reject the truth and we want to embrace a lie okay so that's exactly what's happening in this day and age the only reason that these big hardback people are believing this craziness is because it's a strong delusion that they're under by their own doing and God helps them along. If you keep rejecting God all the time, God tries to bring the truth to you, you keep rejecting it. He tries to bring the truth to you again, you keep rejecting it and you reject it so much that you want to cuss and you want to fight and you want to do everything, eventually God says, all right, I can let you believe the lie that you want to believe. And I can help you out. Bible says he sends strong delusion that they will pursue the lie as their judgment. Look at what they're saying. Let me read that again. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. And then the Bible speaks about God. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet, I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. God is the king. God is the boss. And God is gracious and loving and kind. But he's also holy and just. And he is the ultimate judge. 
And if we persist in defying him and fighting against him bold face and unashamed, we're going to have to receive judgment eventually. So Sodom and Gomorrah is a demonstration of that. You know, God gave them time to change. God gave them time to repent, but they just keep going down the same road. And they were completely corrupt. God said, look, I can't with them. I'm going to have to judge them. Abraham says, look, at least let Lot and the guys escape. And God tried to arrange for Lot and his family to escape, but God had to bring the judgment. So God brings judgment in different ways. But in this case here, it would appear, this is, we looked at two scriptures already. And there's another one that we can look at. We can probably look at that another time. But we look at two scriptures already that show that God, if we keep persistent in sin, and we want to exchange the truth for a lie, God allows us to go into the lie. Romans says, he gave them up. Verse 124, he gave them up. Verse 126, I mean, chapter 1, verse 26. And he gave them over. Chapter 1, verse 28. In 2 Thessalonians 2, it says, he that was restraining was taken out of the way, and God gave them over to strong delusion that they would believe the light. So it is God's judgment when he allows you to have the things that you want sometimes. Same thing happened with the children of Israel when they kept harassing God about food and quail. And they want meat, they want meat, they want meat. And they was complaining. And God says, well, I want meat. I can give them the meat. And God said, I can give them so much meat that by the time... <laughs> Y'all finish yawning on one scene no meat, right? Because they were complaining against God and not approaching the situation in an appropriate manner, right? Anyway, so that's it for me tonight. There are some more scriptures that, you know, we need to look at. Perhaps we can look at that next week. But I just wanted to just touch on it briefly, just so that we kind of know what's happening out there. Because the craziness that's happening out there is not normal. It's a spirit. It's a spirit of Antichrist, it's a spirit of lawlessness, it's a spirit of deception and delusion. And that's why the people are completely caught up in this thing. And that's why we have ridiculous people on all over America doing all sorts of craziness. Do you know that some of these men are now putting tomato paste in plastic tubes like Kool-Aid, you know like how we used to drink Kool-Aid from a, a long cylindrical plastic tube. They're putting tomato paste and something like that, injecting it into themselves, into their rectum, or oh, frozen tomato paste. So they got this frozen tomato paste in this plastic container. Push it up their rectum, and when it melts, the tomato paste secretes out of them, right? Because they want to pretend that they're having a period. A menstrual cycle. This big heart about people, right? That is what we call strong delusion, right? That's craziness. I mean, men gone bonkers across there. And that's not going to stop. That's going to get worse and worse and worse. Because again, Psalms 2, you know, they want to they wanna cast God's truth away. They want to take all that away. Well, God is going to God is going to, in a sense, give them what they want, but it's not what they want. But, you know, that's what they keep asking for. So God is going to allow them to have it. He's going to send strong delusion and deception. Anyway, so that's just touching base on this concept. Let's pray and let's move forward. So Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you again for your word. I want to thank you for the fact that we have the truth and that we can be aware of what's happening around us. We're not caught unawares. We're not caught by surprise. I mean, it is quite incredible, the, the delusion, but at least we know what it is and we know what's happening and we know how not to get caught up in it. So Lord, I pray that you protect us, you protect us from the craziness that's happening. I pray, Lord, that you help those children, that you fight on their behalf and that you cause them to escape the mutilation and the destruction that is being brought against them. And they're so young, they don't know what's happening. They have no idea the kind of decisions that they're making. And it is absolutely horrendous what's happening to those kids. But I pray that you have mercy on them and you fight against those that are fighting against them. 
I pray, Lord, that even though the devil will want to carry out his wicked plans, I pray that you will redirect it away from the children, right? Because the children don't know, they don't know how to choose. They don't know better. But the adults that refuse you and reject you, well, you know, that's not even nice. But it is, it is really not fair for the children to have to bear, you know, lifelong consequences for decisions that they made at six years old cut off their genitals and start taking puberty blockers that block the puberty process. You know, that stuff is real vile and real disgusting and real demonic and destroys the lives of people. It's really awful. So we pray, Lord, that you protect these children and that you protect us um, as things unfold in these latter days. Lord, I pray that you help us to be prepared and help us to be ready for all that is coming. And I pray, Lord, that, you know, we would be pleasing in your eyes in these last days. I pray all these, Father, I pray that you protect us in everything. Please guide us as we go forward. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, guys. Joel Brooks here at the Insight Podcast. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video or found it informative, interesting, or helpful in any way, please give it a like and consider sharing it with your friends. If you want to stay connected, you can check us out at our website, insight.joelbrooksonline.com, and you can also check us out on social media. Links in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and God bless.